Hey guys, Trans here, back another Transformers toy analysis. And in today's toy analysis video, we're going to be taking a look at Wave 6 and 7 of the Transformers Studio Series line. So let's jump right in with our first Studio Series figure, Studio Series Shatter. Now looking at Shatter, she looks really good for a deluxe class figure, especially if you look at the vehicle mode, it's super accurate to what she actually turns into in the film. But when you get to the robot mode, it does look really good, but there is a few minor nitpicks that I have, especially on the side of her, I think, thighs. All those pieces are there. I do not remember that being there on her, but I could be wrong because it's been a long time since I've seen the trailer. But it does look a little bit bulky for Shatter. Another nitpick that I have is this is a faux chest on Shatter. As we can see on the vehicle, on the grill, that's a completely different piece than what Shatter has on her chest. So that kind of stinks, but I can see why they did that because her chest is really complicated. And I don't think they could actually transform that in a way that would look good. I also do like how it has an engine block piece or mechanical parts right there. And I think that gives a lot of detail to Shatter. I really do like like all those wiring in there if you would call those wires and I think that really makes this a figure really good I also do enjoy how she has all this chrome bits on her which definitely brings this studio series figure for her pretty high and overall her detail looks pretty good and if you remember in the trailer she also did turn into a jet so we may get a separate figure of her turning into a jet but one other nitpick that I do have is her face now this may be a battle mask for her because we did see in concept art or like the movie theater cup that she has this mask on but I would much prefer the face that she actually had in trailer too now in this in hand shot that was shown at Paris Hascon, we can see Shatter a little bit better. As you can see, there's a lot more chrome than we saw in the uh, CGI image, and she also has two guns. And I think these guns look really cool, but I do not remember her having guns in the trailer. Maybe she gets these guns later on in the film, but I think the guns look definitely really cool. And they probably will store in her vehicle mode under the car, kind of like how the Studio Series Bonebee did it. And her feet kind of look like Lockdown's feet, and I do not know if that's accurate, but I think they still look pretty cool. The last thing I want to be pointing out on Shatter is the backpack. Now, we do not have any back images of Shatter. Shattered, but that does look like a lot of clover on there. Now this could be mistransformed because there is a few more figures that we'll be covering and they do look mistransformed and I hope this is the case with Shatter because that backpack does not look reassuring whatsoever. But maybe you could take it off uh, with a clip or something or a friction peg to take it off if you are like that. It is a little bit like parts forming just for the robot mode but if it does make the figure better I would recommend doing that. But also I actually did not notice this the first time when I saw it. As you can see we see a tire behind her uh, shoulder but then we also see a tire inside of her leg, which I think that's really cool and accurate to the film. Now let's move on to Studio Series Cogman. Now looking at the Transformers The Last Night Studio Series Cogman, he's just a repainted version of the original Transformers The Last Night Cogman, but this Cogman just has a lot more better paint because the original one was just gray, while this one is all silvered up. He also does have a few more gold bits on him, and that's honestly about it for his uh, toy. Nothing has changed in the molding, just the detail and paint is the only thing that's been changed. As in his in-hand shot, he really does look really good with all that shiny paint. It really does make him stand out amongst the crowd. And if you actually never got a Studio Series Cogman, or the original Cogman I meant, then definitely pick up this Cogman because it's 10 times better than the original. But I'm not going to pick it up since I already have the original Cogman. He also still has the feature of his head turning into a headmaster because he does have the seats in his car. And overall, if you would get this figure, I think it would be better just to leave it in vehicle mode so it doesn't get scratched up because usually uh, Transformers figures with chrome all around him over time does get scratched up. And I only think people should really buy this as a more of a collector's piece because if you do play with it, it may get worn down. And if you're in fear of the chrome getting worn down, then I would definitely recommend the original Last Night version because that was just gray. Now let's move on to Studio Series Scrap Metal. Now boy oh boy, I was not expecting this guy because when I first saw his name leaked, I thought it was like a fake leak, but actually seeing him in a toy mode is super cool. Now a little bit of history on this guy if you don't remember. Scrap Metal was supposed to be the guy that got ripped under the water, but for some reason it used Scrapper's model. And if you want to know more about that, click the i-card above. But to summarize that video for you, he was revived and he was also in the Devastator scenes for like one frame. And honestly, I did not know they were actually going to make a toy of him, so this really does make me happy. And if you look at his CGI model side by side of the toy, they look really accurate, honestly, with all those bars by his head and stuff. The arms do look a little bit different, but he is a Volvo crane, so you can't really do too much. But the biggest nitpick for me with the crane is the crane is wrong. As you can see, the crane has a scoop. Well, in the movie, he had like a special attachment to pick up pipes, but that's just my personal nitpick. But overall, Scrap Metal looks really good, especially all the detail in his chest area. It looks accurate to what the, the CGI concept art that he had. The feet are a little bit different from the concept art, but in the concept art, you can see a little bit of treads coming out from the top of his feet, so I guess it is partly accurate. And overall, this figure is a little bit bulky in the hands, but to me, is one of the 
best Studio Series figures I've seen so far. And I think they did a spot on job of his character, even though he wasn't in the movie and just looking off one piece of concept art. The last thing that I want to point out until we get to in hand images is the vehicle. As you can see, he actually does have a little bit of his robot parts, which I believe is like his crotch area right there. But to me, it's not really that big of a deal because it kind of blends in with the vehicle. Now, moving on to the in hand image, we can see scrap metal, and he actually does have a lot of silver parts in his treads area, which I think that's really cool. You can also see the back of his vehicle, or the top, more or less, and that's where his hands start to form. And you can also see him sitting next to Rampage, who we'll get into later. And if you're also wondering why he has those numbers on him, that's because like a prototype number, so you're not going to get that on your copy. And with this last image, we can see his hook by his butt, and that's where kind of like his backpack is, but honestly, if his backpack is just that hook, it's really not that bad. And you can maybe fold it out and use it as another weapon for him, since I don't believe he has any weapons on him, but maybe you can use that claw in your imagination to make that a weapon. Now taking a look at our next Studio Series figure, it's Studio Series Rampage, or Skipjack if you like that name better, but I prefer the red Rampage variant as Skipjack and the yellow version is Rampage. But with that out of the way, I really do like the Skipjack figure, especially the head and that whole neck assembly is super accurate to what he actually had in the Revenge of the Fallen film. The only thing I really do not like is his tail, and there's two reasons why. For starters, you can see his uh, veal commode piece right behind it, which is not accurate to the film, and kind of ruins how that whole thing is supposed to be streamlined, and I honestly think the original toy did a lot better, but since this thing has to combine, I can see why they did that. The second thing I don't like is that little stand piece. Now, I see why it had to do, because there's no way this figure could stand on its own, and I think you could be able to take this off, I'm not 100% sure, because it kind of looks like it just plops in there, but if not, I'm going to be kind of a little bit disappointed, but I can definitely see why, because there's no way you're going to get this balance on his little tail. I really do like his arm pieces and how all those tread pieces kind of like flare all about. I do think that the original one did it a little bit better, but that's just my personal opinion. But I think what this one did better than the original is if you look at its uh, under the neck assembly, like the chest has all those pieces, which is more accurate to the film than the original Rampage figure had it. Now looking at his vehicle mode, it really looks super accurate, and for some reason I'm just getting, instead of like a bulldozer, like more of a tractor vibe for some reason. I don't know why, maybe it's because of that canopy piece, but overall this uh, bulldozer piece looks really good. The only thing I don't know what he has on him is that little red dot in the middle of his uh, scoop. The only thing that I think that could be is maybe a connector point for when he has to combine into Devastator, but I could be wrong. But I believe that little red piece ruins how this Bucky piece should look like, and if they painted it silver, it would definitely look more better. I also do like all the hydraulic pieces that this uh, bulldozer has on it, and it honestly looks really cool with all that chrome bits in the treads. And it's unknown if this bucket piece is going to move, but just by looking at it, it may move slightly. Now looking at his in-hand photo, he looks really cool, and I do think this is mistransformed because in the CGI image we saw those tread pieces all flaring out, and I think this was in this image still mistransformed because they have it connected. But now in this in-hand image, we can actually see that little red piece is gray. So it definitely does fix it up, but it kind of still sticks out like a sore thumb, but it's definitely a lot better. He also has this little piece under his neck, which is like a sticker piece. I can't make out what that says. Maybe that's just a prototype sticker or something, but I could be wrong. But I overall do like how they rechange that coloring in the canopy piece to be more of a dark blue-ish tint, and I think that looks really cool. He also does have these little uh, circle roller pieces that he has on the treads. Since the treads don't move, he does have to have those little tires to move, which I think that's a good touch. And I definitely do like the chrome that's on his fingers. And looking at this image of him, we can see the minesweepers behind him, which are like those uh, pointy bits. And we can also see a little bit more of this engine piece by his, don't know what you call it, but the piece that's in front of the glass. And I think that looks really cool, especially if they add a detail of all those wires in there. And I definitely would recommend picking this guy up if you see him, since he actually can turn into a robot, can combine into Devastator as a foot, and actually transform. It's like the dream all the Transformers fans wanted to have since we saw Devastator, but we never got it until around 10 years later. Now looking at this last image, we can see Rampage under Long Haul, and we'll get to Long Haul next. But the reason why I'm showing this image is because we can see the bucket piece of Skipjack, and it all folds up on his back like that, or kind of more or less sits on it, which I think the backpack is actually not that bad if it's just that one piece. And this figure definitely did a lot better in Streamline itself than the original one. Now looking at our last Studio Series Constructicon, it's Studio Series Long Haul. Now Long Haul looks really good in the CGI image, but he does have a little bit of flaws. The first flaw that I want to point out is, is his hands. As you can see, his hands are definitely are exactly the same as Blackout's hands, how they could not really come out and they kind of just were like more or less clappy hands. That's the uh, one thing that I don't really like about this figure. He also has overextending uh, bucket pieces, which he's not supposed to have, but he does have to combine into Devastator, so I can definitely see why it had to do that move. But besides those two nitpicks, this figure looks freaking amazing. If you look at the head sculpt, it looks definitely better than all the other 
long hauls that we got, and especially the Voyager, because the Voyager's head does not have anything on this new head. I do want to point out that his uh, thigh pieces are actually uh, faux pieces, if you don't know what that means. It's like a fake piece that's actually not from the vehicle, so those things just hide in his vehicle mode. Um, his feet are actually a little bit different from the Voyager's feet. They're kind of like more angled in, kind of like a scooper per se, because the 2009 long hauls feet were more or less rounded. And he also does have a heel spur, which is actually accurate to what a long haul had too. This new long haul also has a new posability for the top tires as it's on that, I think it's like a sliding hinge joint, and we'll get more into that in the in hand images. He also does have his uh, red stripes, which I think should say a vehicle number, which he sadly doesn't have, but they may add that later on, or repo labels will hook us up with a set for this guy. And all the silver on long haul and his robot mode looks super cool. I definitely like the new chest because I feel like it was better than the original long haul, and I think this long haul definitely blew out that original Voyager right out of the water in some aspects, but I wish he had his sword weapons like the original long haul had. Now look at the Studio Series long haul's vehicle mode, it looks really accurate to what he actually was in the film, because the original Voyager long haul's vehicle mode was inaccurate because he was actually a different dump truck, like a much bigger dump truck, that long haul was supposed to be in concept art, but that big dump truck never made it into the film, and when he was in the film he was actually a smaller dump truck which is portrayed here. The one biggest nitpick and inaccuracy of this dump truck is, if you look on it, he doesn't have all that detail that the truck in the Avenger of the Fallen had. I guess the way to explain it has like all those dents and lines, while this only just has one solid black line going through the side of it. And it does have that detail partly on the bottom, which I guess it's kind of accurate because it does have it, but I wish it would have it up there too, what it should be. Yet again, you do have to have some limitations since this actually combines into Devastator. I'd also like to point out that his whole um, canopy piece where the window is looks really accurate to what he had, and I really do like that blue color. And it looks a lot better once we get into the in-hand images. But the last thing that I want to point out here is that he actually has lights, which is actually really cool. Now looking at our first in-hand image of Long Haul, there is one little nitpick that I have. And that's his hands being in his vehicle mode. Now, yet again, he does have to combine, so you do have to sacrifice a few things here. But it kind of looks ugly in his vehicle mode, honestly, because if you're going to, like, for a play feature, put dirt in there or something, it ain't going to be looking so good. And that's why the original Voyager looked so good, because that actually could go up and down and dump things and was all flat. And I don't actually think this long haul can actually go up and down in his bucket. But we'll look into that more once we get into another in-hand image. Another thing that I do not like is how he has that flat piece up there, and I think it should be more detailed and more rigid, but that's just my opinion. Now looking at this image of Longo, we can actually see more of his interior piece, or if you would want to call that, more of his like engine, I believe. As you can see, he has a lot of cool details up there, which are really accurate to how we had him in the film. And we can also see another uh, silver piece, which is by his uh, back tire, which actually looks really accurate to the film. That's actually really cool to have more silver in his vehicle mode. And here's the money shot for Longo. As you can see, he's actually painted in dark green instead of molded in that color, which makes this figure looks super cool. Especially all that paint on him with the green, it really pops, especially if all the other parts in him are actually physically painted. Especially like the chrome pieces definitely stick out. All that um, gray pieces by his faux grill pieces there too, which is painted. And he also has like these spike pieces coming out from his uh, bucket shields, if you want to call them. And he actually does have these spike pieces coming out from his bucket part, which I guess you could use as a brass knuckle for a long haul since he does have that uh, coming out. And you could maybe punch people and use it as a brass knuckle, just use your imagination. Also looking at this image, I take back what I said about the hands because now you can actually see it more clearly and they do look a lot more better. He actually has like uh, four fingers or so what I can see through this. It's not really that accurate or I can't really see it that well on the left side, but on the right side you can actually see four individual fingers, which is actually pretty cool. Also if you look at the feet, they're super accurate, especially in his tires. Especially the bottom tires look like they're molded in like some type of black, which is different from the top tires, which makes those tires look a little bit more dirty and look pretty cool. But his feet in general just look so accurate to what he had in the film and especially just everywhere on this figure looks really good until we get into the backpack but we'll get to there later but the last thing that i want to point out this long haul figure is his face and if you look at it it has so much detail i mean it looks super good like i i, I don't know any other studio series figure that i can compare this to because that detail just looks super cool and better than all the other constructicon faces that we got and honestly if you look at this long haul figure it could easily be turned into onslaught just take the ability to turn into a foot away and this could easily be a really nice onslaught figure. They just have to retool him. Kind of like how they turned a Berserker toy into Crowbar. And in this shot here, we have the backpack. Now this shot is not in the best lighting, but you can clearly see his backpack does not look good whatsoever. And I'm going to give the benefit of the doubt that this figure is mistransformed in the backpack. Because no Studio Series figure would look that bad in the backpack in my opinion. And that has to be mistransformed because 
I don't think Hasbro would release anything that would look that messy, but hey, that's just my opinion. But overall, I can also say this could be mistransformed, because remember with Rampage how we did not have his uh, tread pieces tucked in, and in the CGI image they were out? That was also a mistransformation, uh, and how about when we first saw the first images for Stinger? Everybody thought he looked ugly like a one-step changer in the first images, because he was horribly mistransformed, but when we got him, he looked amazing. So, I think that's the same case with Long Haul. And also, if you look at his uh, bucket shield pieces, that one piece actually looks like it could be articulated which is actually pretty cool. Now moving on to our next Studio Series figure, it's Studio Series Transformers 2007 Optimus Prime. Now this Optimus Prime has definitely fixed a lot of things from the original Revenge of the Fallen um, version of him, especially the chest. In the Revenge of the Fallen one, it was like all blocky and spread out and they definitely fixed it by making it more streamlined and more close to each other, what he should have looked like. They also fixed his legs, because I don't know if you guys remember, but in the Revenge of the Fallen one, he had this whole red piece by the upper part of his leg, which is definitely inaccurate, and now they fixed that. Which which I honestly am very happy they did because I actually owned the Revenge of the Fallen one and that's just one of my biggest nitpicks of all time on that figure. They also add like this little bump piece to the new Optimus Prime right there, which I don't know why and I don't remember him ever having that in the movie, but if you guys know what part of the truck that's called, please tell me. And this Optimus Prime also comes with a gun, which looks really cool and it's definitely really accurate. I wish he did come with two, kind of like how he added in Revenge of the Fallen, but in the first movie he did only use one, so it is kind of makes sense that he only has one. And honestly the paintwork is a lot better. He has a more light lighter blue than the one from Red Dead Fallen, which is a lot more darker. And honestly, I think his Optimus Prime is definitely spot on. Now, we don't have any back shots of him, so we don't know what his gas canisters look like. But overall, his truck mode looks almost 100% uh, the same as the Red Dead Fallen one. One thing I don't like is his smokestacks are actually not higher than they should. Maybe that's just a safety issue, but I'm not 100% sure. I can also see that his grill is a lot lighter than from the Revenge of the Fallen one. But there's always one nitpick with this Optimus Prime from the Revenge of the Fallen and the new one that I wish they fixed, and that's the flame detail. Detail. He should also have some orange or yellowish thrown in there to make him 100% accurate. But for some reason, they never do that, which I honestly don't know why. Maybe it's um, too expensive to do, but if they actually did it, that would be really nice to have. And overall, I'm definitely going to be picking up this Prime. Now, looking at our next Studio Series figure, it's Studio Series Leader Class Jetfire. Now, this Jetfire definitely blows out the old Leader Class right out of the water with so many new details, especially for him having his engine pieces as his legs instead of how the original one had it as like a overextending piece kind of on the shoulders which is 100% inaccurate and now he actually has him as his as his legs definitely makes this guy so much more accurate than the original. I also really do like how he actually comes with an axe which the original leader class did not have and he also comes with a cane but for some reason it's not shown in this image. Also the beard piece looks super spot on to what he had in the movie and it definitely looks a little bit more better than the original leader class version. Also the one really good part of this jet fire that I want to point out is if you look at the back of his head like how all those pieces are like split apart and then if you look at his veal command how they all recondense it, it th this is really cool guys i mean this is the best jet fire in my opinion that we're ever going to get and honestly if you ever bought the original uh movie the best jet fire i'm honestly really sorry for you because now this new leader class is blowing you right out of the water the only little nitpick i do have with this is it doesn't come with his gun like he had in the original leader class but besides that this guy is amazing I mean, there's no thing I can take apart from this guy that makes him look bad. And I mean, the veal commode just looks super spot on, and I'm really happy that Studio Series made him the way he should have been. And in this image where we're going to get to later with the leader class Megatron, we can see him having in his right hand his little cane, which probably turns into his landing gear tire like in the original leader class. And just like with the original leader class Jetfire and Optimus Prime, you can actually combine them to make power up Optimus Prime. But in this case, I should use the Voyager Optimus Prime and the leader class Jet fire, which I think is an ultimate scale and it definitely works out. The only nitpick I have with this Ultimate Optimus Prime is the fact that he doesn't have any weapons, like in the original Avenger the Fallen one, so you would have to use Optimus Prime's gun or Jetfire's axe for Optimus Prime, but probably a third party will give him some separate weapons. And overall, this Optimus Prime looking like this is really good and accurate to the film. The only thing that's a little bit inaccurate is if you look at those jet engines, they should have a little bit more point at the top, but that's really the only thing that's wrong with it. Now looking at our next Studio Series figure, it's Studio Series Bone Crusher. Now Bone Crusher looks really good, and it's definitely a vast improvement from the original 2000. 
2007 one. But I do have one issue with it, and I just think in the body area that he's a little bit too blocky. That's just my opinion. I just feel like something's off, and that's really the only thing, that he's a little bit too blocky there. But besides that, I really do like the face, and the hands look definitely really cool. It looks like the, um, the right arm has a little bit more bulkiness to the left one, but I could be wrong. His feet definitely look spot on to what he had in the movie with his little roller skates. And the only thing I also don't like is his claw for some reason. I, I just feel like something's off with it. I don't know really what it is, but if you guys agree, comment down below. Now taking a look at his Minesweeper vehicle mode, it looks freaking cool. It, it's 100% accurate to what he should be in the in the film, and I mean, just that alone, I, I really think he looks better in vehicle mode than his robot mode. That's just my personal opinion. And there's also a third party Bone Crusher coming out, which also looks really good, and I'm pretty sure that that company is going to have some tough competition with this Bone Crusher figure. But overall, I gotta say, if you love Bone Crusher or you don't even have a Bone Crusher, this is the toy to get because the original 2007 toy was really not that good. He was too small and he wasn't that accurate and this guy just blows that old 2007 one right out of the water so you definitely got to pick up this bone crusher to complete your decepticon collection from the 2007 line now in this image of bone crusher we can see him having a little bit more chrome on him which looks really cool and now we can actually see the fully extended uh claw piece which definitely looks a lot better and one last thing that i want to point out is we can actually see his backdrop and that backdrop is when optimus prime and bone crusher are fighting on that freeway and also for jet fires on the bottom it's a backdrop from egypt which i honestly think these two definitely suit the characters really well. Now looking at our next Studio Series figure, it's Studio Series Drift. And he also comes with the baby Dinobot so we're in Transformers The Last Knight. And I gotta say, this is really cool. This Drift only comes with one sword, which is accurate because he did lose one in Age of Extinction. And the overall paintwork on this guy is phenomenal and blows the old Last Knight Drift out of the water because that Last Knight Drift is only red. And it was definitely not accurate to the film and this one just blows that guy right out. Speaking of which, his face is painted really well and I like the red that's actually on his crest piece, which is super accurate. He actually he does come with his two little swords, so that is definitely a bonus. And look at these baby Dinobots, I believe they're actually articulated, but we'll look at that better in the next in hand image. Now let's move on to Drift's vehicle commode, and it's exactly the same as the last night figure, but with only one change. As you can see if you look at his tires, you know how his rims are black? Well in the original, his rims are red, which is definitely inaccurate. And this one is super accurate with that uh, red stripe around the rims, which makes this figure 100% movie accurate. And look at this image of Drift, we can see him in his um, box stand, and his background is actually actually the junkyard that Kate used to live in in the last night where all the Autobots were hiding in. But zooming into that photo, we can see some amazing paint detail on Drift. Especially if you look at his shin guards, it's all black but then it has red on the outlines which is super good and this paintwork is just phenomenal, especially if you look at his face. It's like custom painted, or I think it's painted by a machine but it's actually not molded in that plastic which definitely makes the face pop along with all this red. And honestly this is the best Drift I've ever seen so far, even from some custom ones, this definitely beats them in my book. And if you look at the baby Dinobots, they do seem to be articulated because in the CGI image, we saw like one of their arms being down and their mouths, but we can also see from the pterodactyl that his arms are kind of like basically using a DJ table if you want to say, while his other arms are in a different pose. So I definitely think these guys have some poseability, but definitely not too much. I don't think they have any poseability in the tails because I think that's just a solid molded piece, but the arms and legs and possibly the mouths, definitely. Now looking at our next studio series figure is the JD Red Knight. And if you don't remember who this guy is, I originally did not too. But apparently he's from the Jing Dong Company in China, which is kind of like a Target. And I guess they had a promotional for Transformers The Last Night, so they made a character out of the truck from JD. And now he's actually getting his own figure. And I do have to say up front that this is not going to be part of Studio Series. And I believe it's going to be an exclusive, but I could be wrong, but I know for a fact it is not part of Studio Series. But since it was coming out, I thought I should actually add it into this video. But taking a look at JD's box, it looks really good. I do like the CGI image on there and I definitely like how um, it's like really 3D and actually looks really nice. Has a Transformers Generations logo, Transformers logo down the side, Hasbro, and then the character's name, JD Red Knight. On the back of the box we see his product shot and it kind of reminds me of the Age of Extinction Galvatron box and this is actually a retool of that figure which we'll get into later. But his bio says when the Autobots need backup, this is the bot who delivers. Now I kind of think that's a little bit of a sad bio in all honesty but he was not in the film but I guess they kind of just have to <laughs> put something on a paper and that's what they got. Now taking a look at JD's robot mode, oh my god, this thing looks super good for uh, how he looked like in the cinematic trailer, especially the head. I think they got it really spot on to what he was in that little um, promotional image. Now looking at JD's robot mode, he is definitely a retool of the Galvatron figure. As you can see, some of the retooled parts is definitely his head, and the whole chest area now has the JD logo like he had in that cinematic short. But everything else still is Galvatron, like the feet, that's Galvatron's feet, the arms are definitely Galvatron's feet. And the paint is all new on him, because Galvatron was originally gray, and now 
now he's red of black, which I honestly think this is a good figure. Though he does suffer the same issue as Galvatron being a shell former, but I do think if you just take off that backpack, he would really serve as a good figure because kind of in the cinematic short, he didn't really have anything on his back. And you can basically treat this like a Galvatron figure. Now looking at this image, we can see the JD Knight having some boxes next to him. And on the box has a dog from the JD company and it has a lot of things that are in Japanese or Chinese, which I cannot read. But maybe you could use this for like target practice or like he can kick it or something because I do not believe that he comes with a weapon, which kind of stinks. But if he does come in a whole new box and comes with these custom boxes, then I'm not really complaining. Looking at an up close shot of his chest, we can actually see a little bit of better image of his face. And it honestly looks really good. And I think they did a studio series level job for this guy. Though they did reuse the Galvatron mode, and I would prefer a whole new mode. And in the future, they would redo Galvatron to be more movie accurate and not actually a shell former, which I hope they do. But I still think the Galvatron mold was definitely the way to go. As we look at his truck mode, we can actually see the side of it. It has the company's dog on him. And honestly, I really do like how it has all this paint on it. The silver is super spot on to what the truck had. And it actually makes this figure a lot better and more quality wise, more appealing to look at. Looking at the front of JD, we can see his truck cab. And it honestly looks really good. And it looks like a real truck. And it, yeah, it's supposed to be a real truck. But the vibe mainly is that I would not mind making this guy in different colors and then reusing him as different characters. But then remolding him in the front and the chest, probably the legs and the arms, kind of to make a fleet of flat nose trucks, which I think that would be really cool. And looking at the back of him, it's just the exact same as Galvatron, but he does have two painted smokestacks, which I definitely do like. He's probably going to still suffer from the same issue of Galvatron having that hole in the back, which we can see, and also the hole that's by his trailer hitch, which kind of sucks, but it still is definitely a good toy to pick up. Now, looking at this last image of the JD Red Knight, we can see him standing next to his vehicle mode. And I honestly think this is going to be a good figure to pick up. Now, I do not know if this is going to be getting released in the States, because I think it's going to be a Japan exclusive, but yet it does have English on the box, so this could actually be released in the US, maybe under Studio Series in a different box, but I highly doubt it. But honestly, there's not that much known about this figure so far and these are the only images we got and his images were released three weeks ago so if i do get any more information on him i'll definitely keep you guys posted now looking at the second to last studio series figure it's studio series leader class megatron with igor now honestly this megatron is kind of eh, in my opinion and it's kind of weird how this is the only image that we got of this megatron so maybe they took it out or they're not going to show it revealed yet i don't honestly know why because everybody else that was shown has a studio series image except for this leader class megatron which i don't understand why but let's talk about what we can see here first of all let's take a look at megatron's truck now it is really accurate to what he had in the film i just think the spikes on the front is a little bit overkill and that should not be that much right there also the tarp looks pretty good i just think the coloring on the whole truck is a little bit to... I don't know, it's not really like rusty and dirty how he actually had it in the Dark of the Moon film. But besides that paint apps, he actually has this whole trailer piece that actually can transform, which is actually pretty cool into his body. And he actually has those ropes that are holding down his tarp. And when you look at the robot mode, you don't even see those ropes, so maybe those are like a separate piece, I'm not 100% sure. But now let's take a look at Igor, which is that little gray piece over there. Now, this is not the best image, so there is no other image of Igor so far, which I'm thinking that's Igor, because who else could that be? And looking at it, it I, I can't really judge judge off it because it's so blurry there's no way I could tell but I think it would look accurate because all the other studio series figures have been accurate but this Megatron figure is really questionable first of all let's look at the feet the feet are way too blocky if you look at it it's like this big old block and then it goes into this skinny leg no that that's not good whatsoever his gun for some reason is pointing <laughs> <laughs> at Jeff Fire, which is kind of funny. His arms seem pretty cool until you get to like his shoulder piece and then it has like that piece over there, which it, 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 I don't know, it just looks too blocky. And if you look at the chest, he looks like he does have those wire pieces, which I think are on his vehicle mode, which I think that looks pretty cool. And the tarp kind of covers all that detail up, so it's kind of hard to tell. But just by looking at this image, this Megatron figure to me looks really bad. And I'm kind of disappointed because we always want to have a Dark of the Moon leader class Megatron, especially for myself. I love the Dark of the Moon design for Megatron, but this figure figure is really a letdown in my opinion. Maybe it's mistransformed. Let's give it the benefit of the doubt, but honestly it doesn't look like that if you look at the legs. The legs just look way too blocky. But I mean, besides that, everything else looks alright besides the shoulders. But until we get some better images of Mr. Megatron, then I can fully make my decision. Now looking at the last Studio Series figure, it's the Almighty Devastator. 
Now this Devastator looks so freaking cool. Look at all the details on him, especially in the head, with me wondering how the heck is Mixmaster going to turn into that? Well, I guess we have to wait and see until we get our Mixmaster figure, but the figure that we do have already is the long haul that we saw, which is over there. We also got Rampage, who's that foot, and we also got Scrap Metal, who's actually the fingers over here. And honestly, looking at this guy, it's, it's, it's what everybody wanted since Revenge of the Fallen came out. And proper looking Devastator for all the figures that can combine from robot to vehicle and into the hand modes and arms and limbs. And I mean... Ugh. You do not know, if you're not a true Transformers fan, you do not know how real Transformers fans feel about this. I mean, all of us always wanted to have this Devastator. It, it's just phenomenal. Sadly, we don't have any back images of him, so we won't be able to see all that amazing details. I do want to point out a few things on Devastator. First of all, they did so many extra miles and it didn't have to. Look, first of all, just look at all this detail on him. Super accurate if you actually see the film in Devastator. You can also see that he has those missile pods on his left shoulder. Now, those are super accurate if you ever played the Revenge of the Fallen game along with that gun that's on Scrapper right over there. When I first saw this Devastator image, I thought it was like a solid piece. It was like just a statue that will get painted and you can move around everything, but knowing that every single component here actually transforms into a robot and then into a limb mode, it, it, it's it's just overwhelming. It, this is great. This is the best Devastator we're ever going to get. I can actually point out a few details. First of all, we can see Scrapper with the hand over there. He looks super accurate to what he turns into. We can also see a high tower figure which combines with Scrap Metal, which is actually actually accurate to the film. We can also see the torso piece of Devastator, which is probably going to be turning into Scavenger, which may get repainted into Demolisher later on. We can also see Mixmaster, which is the one I'm most questionable about, is how in the world is Mixmaster going to turn into that? Is that like a separate page to connect on, which I highly doubt, but once we get to see Mixmaster, I'm going to be very surprised on how he can turn into that head. Now look at this image of Devastator, it's just a more of a side shot, and we can actually see tubes coming out of his back, which is 100% accurate to how we actually had it in the film. And looking at his mouth, I do not think it'll be able to move like and open its mouth for like the vortex grinder and looking at the head I do not think it's going to be able to open up and suck in any dirt or to look like that because it has to be a solid piece because there's no way they could make all those pieces move and stuff I could be wrong and if I'm wrong I'm hopefully I'm wrong because I would love to see that but I highly doubt that mouth is going to be able to open and here we got what Devastator is supposed to look like once you got all the Constructicons combined and oh boy I'm very happy to say that we're actually going to be getting an overload figure and here's why now originally I thought they were going to do the whole scavenger thing where scavenger is actually the torso piece without overload like they did with the original um devastator but here's one little thing that i want to point out here that confirms that we're getting an overload figure first of all do you see those tires over there well i'm almost 100 positive those are overloads tires because if you saw in the last shot we saw long haul having his two tires over there so those big tires could possibly not be his and also to confirm that it's overload you can see how the bucket that gets connected into those tires has ridges in it that is 100 percent accurate to overloads bucket when he turns into a vehicle. I also do like to point out here on this Devastator figure that he actually has another set of shoulder missiles because in the concept art, or I mean the prototype image, he only had one, but now on the supposed of the B when everybody's combined, he actually has two, which is accurate. We can also see High Tower connected to Scrap Metal, which looks pretty cool. I think the hand should be turned around like in a film because that whole uh, crane piece is actually sticking out instead of sticking in. And the Scrapper himself, he looks super accurate, and I really can't wait to see what he looks like in Studio Series robot mode form. The only thing I am a little bit confused about are those gear pieces that are getting connected into Rampage. Now those may be Rampage's uh, tread pieces, but I kind of doubt it since we can see him having his tread pieces as a toes. So that also could be um, Overload's piece since Scavenger does not have any piece that would have those gears on it. And if we ever did see the back of the Devastator figure, then we could easily tell apart what other components are there. Because if we ever saw the back of him, we would know how everything in the back part combines. I also would want to point out all this detail in the pistons. Yes, I know it's a little bit blurry, but that is just super good. Good. and we're possibly going to get a better image of this later on so I'll definitely keep you guys posted with that but the last thing i do want to point out here with this devastator figure is the mouth now it actually shows it has green in there and the prototype version does not have green so i don't know if that's just a light up feature or that's just like a photoshop thing they did with it i could be wrong maybe it actually lights up green which i think would be really cool but then if there's going to be a gimmick in there how in the world is mixmaster going to transform from a cement mixer into a head and to a robot is what i'm wondering which also leads me to my final thing that i want to talk about devastator Remember how I had that Constructor Con Misconceptions video and how there was payload? Well, I'm almost positive that we're going to get a repaint of Long Haul and they're going to make that yellow and they're going to call it payload. Kind of like
like how we got the Hunt for Decepticons payload. Same thing for Rampage. You're gonna make a yellow version to make Devastator Akron because in the movie he had a yellow leg instead of a red one. So then we can actually mix and match the pieces. And then I'm almost positive that for Scavenger, because he makes a torso bit, they're gonna turn that mold into Demolisher because why would they just make a completely different mold for an existing CGI model they already have of a character? Kind of like how they did with Lockdown and Shadow Raider. So then we can mix and match and I think that's gonna be freaking awesome. Just imagine Devastator for white torso and the yellow legs. It, it, this, this is gonna be so much fun once we get this guy. And it's actually unclear if this is gonna be a box set or they're all gonna be sold separately. But looking at it, I believe they're all gonna be sold separately. And honestly, from here, who knows where Studio Series is gonna go. This is like the best amount of detail we ever saw for a Studio Series figure so far. Just looking at Devastator and some of these new waves. We don't know when the Studio Series line is ever gonna end. And I hope it doesn't end because it makes figures look so good. And for a price for a deluxe for 20 that looks super detailed like scrap metal, I think it's definitely worth it. And for 30 bucks for like a bigger version of like, uh, for long haul and uh, rampage, that looks really good in my opinion for the price. And I think price per character really works out. And honestly, once we get better images of Devastator, I think this is going to be the hot toy of 2019 because all these figures are going to be coming out in 2019. Sadly, we're not going to be coming for Christmas, but they're all coming in the spring of 2019 and some of them are coming in May of 2019. So yeah, that's basically all the Studio Series characters that we got in so far and once we get more releases, I'll be doing more videos on them. Honestly, what do you guys think? Comment down below who's your favorite Studio Series figure, which one looks the best, and which ones would and would you not buy. As always, it's been Trans Series with another Toy Analysis video, and as always, I'll be seeing you guys later with another Transformers video.